So I went to Egypt very early on in the, um, the revolution and spent the three weeks from the, the first week until Mubarak stood down covering uh, what went on. Again, I was on assignment uh, part of the time, um, but had my, my own uh, agenda as well. And I was using my, my film camera, my medium format film camera, to um, try, and, try and look at it in a, a slightly different way. Like, I'm not a news photographer. I'd, I'd actually never covered uh, an unfolding news event before. So it's a good question to ask me you know, how I ended up in, in Libya, but I guess uh, it, it started in Egypt and it was, it was very much a, uh, a learning curve. Uh, and um, yeah, I just felt like maybe I could say something slightly different. My series consists of two almost separate parts. Um, the first part being when I was there in early March um, and I pretty much followed the, uh, the rebel advance as they were moving up and down the, the desert road fighting against Gaddafi's forces. And I was trying to document the, um, the, the, the effort that the, the revolutionaries were, were trying to, to make in winning back this territory and yeah, was looking at the, the violence and the, um, uh, you know, the, the conflict. But uh, when I went back in, uh, in July, uh, uh, I really wanted to look at uh, daily life and these quieter moments that were going on uh, aside from the conflict. I think the, the pictures from uh, my second trip are perhaps more interesting to me and maybe more useful in the grand scheme of things as well because they were different. They're quite different. They they were in in places that no one was really looking at. Um, you know, everyone automatically in that kind of situation follows the uh, the, the 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 breaking news, the the fighting. Um, and I did do that on the on the first trip, but uh, yeah, really, when I went back the second time, I, I wanted to to get away from uh, the the media, uh, the other, you know, media people who were there and, um, yeah, just explore on my own. So I went to these towns and uh, parts of the country that you would pass through as you came from Egypt into, into the east of Libya, which was obviously uh, under the control of the uh, revolutionary forces. Um, and look at these places that uh, we had uh, blasted through and, and not really uh, paid much attention to, uh, although they were integral to the whole story because these were the people who um, stood up to Gaddafi's forces in the very beginning when we, there was no media there and, you know, really laid, laid the foundations of the uh, of the revolution, if that hadn't happened, if they hadn't come out in such force, then it probably wouldn't have gone the way it, the way it did. The country, uh, the, the East in particular, was, was trying to get back to normal in order to sustain the, 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 the effort. Um, they had to keep producing food. Um, they, you know, they had to keep the hospitals running. Um, and that's just as important as the uh, the the political movement and the 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 guys who are fighting on the front line, I guess, because if the if society shuts down, then um, it's it's not gonna it's not gonna work. Respect for me, I think I said um, when I was asked to react to the word before the masterclass was um, quite closely related to. Uh, you know, self-determination and self, self-respect. Um, and really that's what I felt was, uh, was, was part of the, the whole movement to, uh, overthrow the, the regimes in, in Tunisia, Egypt and Libya was that people had, 
had the respect taken away from them and really yearned to, to get that back uh, individually and collectively.